Hey, what's up, guys? If you guys can't tell by the title, obviously I'm very pissed off, and for good reason. I honestly am tired of being treated like shit. And as you can see, guys, rocking the Michael Jackson style, of course. God rest his soul at the king of top. But, you know, I'm honestly getting tired of being treated like fucking shit. Like, everybody says, you know, like, especially when I'm in a relationship that goes bad, like, I always get the blame for shit. Like, every fucking time. When I do nothing but love that person and I'm there for them. Like, that's all I do is I am there for that person no matter what. Like, I'm really getting tired of being treated like fucking shit. Like, y'all fucking act like, you know, it's okay to treat people like shit. Like, and I've noticed this not just, you know, in relationships side of things, but music industry wise as well. Like, I'm getting tired of being judged and thrown away like I don't fucking matter. I'm really getting fucking sick of that. Like, as all of you know and are very well aware of by now, I am a music artist. I do music for a living. But, like, it's sad, because, like, every time I get into a relationship, when things are going really good, that person that I'm with decides to do something so fucked up and stupid to hurt me. Every fucking time, and I'm getting sick of it. And everybody wonders why I am the way I am, why I'm clingy, why I'm so afraid of getting hurt. Why I always worry about shit. That shit ain't my fault. So stop blaming me. You want to blame somebody. Blame the people that made me that way. Blame those that caused me to become the way that I am now. Like. You know. I can't help. You know. How I am. I can't help that. Like, it's stupid, because, like, you know, I see all these couples out and about, and, you know, everything is going great for them and stuff like that. And then when I finally get that, I wind up getting treated like a piece of shit. Every fucking time, I'm getting so fed up with it. My most recent relationship, me and her had known each other for... God, well over eight months. You know, we became really good friends. We got together. And stuff like that. And this relationship lasted for about three weeks. Until the other day. But what happened was... I found out that she was cheating on me with four other dudes at the same time. Four fucking dudes at the same time. And then I've come to find out the entire time while she's talking to all these, all four of these other dudes online, at the same time she's got a best friend right there in her home who she's fucking behind my back. Like, what the fuck? Like, am I not, is there something that I'm not doing for you? Like, what's the deal? Because last time I checked, I was treating you really good. You know, I was doing everything I could to make you happy. But apparently that's not the case. And this is the type of shit I deal with every fucking time. I'm getting tired of it. They either judge me because I live here at home with my mom who cannot do very much. Because as a lot of you might know, she was hit by a car just recently. And is going to have to go into it. More than likely going to have to, you know... Going to hip surgery, which means she won't be able to do anything. 
So really, I'm the only one who is here at home to take care of her. And then also, I know it's fucked up, but because of my size and how I look. A lot of people judge me on that because I'm 5'3 and I'm 26 years old. I got, I have facial differences more than the regular person. But what the fuck should that matter? If you ask me, looks don't mean shit. It's how you treat the person that should really fucking matter. Like, it's bullshit. And as for the music industry side of things, a lot of you are wondering, you know, why I'm not signed to a record label yet. Well, there's your answer right there. It's because of how I look. They don't think I will make it very far in the music industry because of how I look. And yeah, I can go off and start up my own record. What oh, you know, my own record label and show like that, which I try. I really did try to start up my own label and shit, but it just didn't work out because I don't have the right stuff to, you know, do it properly to make it legitimate. So, let me slide around over here. But, you know, that's a huge part of, you know, why I'm not getting anywhere in the music industry is because of how I look. I know it's stupid. I get that. And I agree, it is stupid. Like, instead of, you know, judging me on what I look like, y'all should judge me by my skills and what I can bring to the table. And believe me, I can bring a lot to the table. Y'all already know this. You guys have heard my stuff and seen what I can do. You guys know I have a lot to offer. So, for those of you wondering, there's your answer as to why I'm not signed. It's because of how I look. Record labels don't think I'll make it very far because of how I look. I know it's stupid. I mean, I do help people out with, you know, a little side thing I got going right now. Like, you know, my friend Angel. What up, sis? What up, Matt? But, like, everybody wonders why I'm not signed and why I'm not making it like I should be. Well, the answer is because I, according to society and the record label side of things, it's because of how I look. Which, I personally don't think looks should mean shit. I mean, like, I don't, I don't fucking get it. I mean, yes, I am still looking for a record label to be signed to. So I can actually support my own record label. Because I do have one album called Outcast Records, as a lot of you guys might know, which was attacked by my now ex recently, too. She tried shutting it down, and it didn't work. I know you're not, Angel. But a lot of these motherfuckers out there... Like, you know, they judge me by what I can and can't do musically, which I enjoy that part of it. But to sit there and say that I won't make it, you know, just because of how I look, like, what right do you mainstream record labels have to judge me? You don't fucking know me. You don't know what I've gone through and what I've been through in my lifetime. You don't know what I'm capable of or what I can and can't do. And you never will because you guys don't give me that fair chance that I need to actually make it. I have a lot to fucking offer. And I mean a lot. I've been doing music since 2010. 2009 at the earliest. 
2010 is when I started making, you know, my first beats. That's what I started out doing. I started out tracking and doing instrumentals and beats and shit like that. And then from there, I got into raps, vocals, you know, voice effects, you know, that type of deal. And then from that, I developed into doing, you know, my own stuff with dubstep. Because my little sister, Melissa Wilde, shout out to you, sis. Fucking love you. Can't wait to see you in the munchkin. But she's the one who initially got me interested in dubstep. She's the one that introduced me to Lindsey Sterling, which is my first ever dubstep song ever. Um, the first song I ever heard was Crystal Eyes by Lindsey Sterling. And once I heard that, I was hooked. And then once, you know, I heard Lindsey Sterling, I started getting into stuff like Scourge, um, Hulk, a lot of the Hulk remixes, um, Ghost in the Machine, Skrillex, you know, all these huge dubstep artists. I started getting into it, and then I also wound up getting into Nightcore. So, like, you know, that's kind of how I got into that stuff. But all in all, you know, like, getting treated the way I do is fucking is bullshit. Like, you know, record labels act like they can just sit there and judge me by how I fucking look. When instead of judging me by how I look, why not judge me by my talent and what I show you that I can do? And if you see something that I need to work on, help me develop my skill for that thing that needs worked on. Help me do that shit. Because let me tell you guys something. A lot of you don't know this, but my good friend Possessed One, aka Bob Heaps PO on Facebook, you can look him up. He sent my stuff around to a few local, you know, guys, and they wound up getting into some major record companies, and I mean, huge record companies, so they came out to Akron and stuff to check out the club, see what was going on, like, you know, to find out what was hot, you know, and do some scouting, well, Zach showed them some of my stuff after they had arrived there. And was like, all right, you know, this kid's good. How can we find him? How can we get in contact with him? This guy's got great talent. We love what he does. Well, he showed them everything, like all my social media. And so with that, they're like, all right, now what does he look like? So we know, you know, who to, you know, look for on Facebook. Well, he showed them my picture. And the exact words out of their mouths, it still pisses me off to this day, were this. Yes, he has the skill, his stuff's amazing, but he will never make it in the music industry because of how he looks. He won't make it onto any magazines of how he looks, or any of that. Those were their exact words to him, and after he told me that, that's when I snapped. That's when I released that diss track on the music industry. That's when I released that song calling out the music industry on what they said. Because when they attacked me like that, I took it personal. I know I shouldn't have, but you know, when you talk about somebody's looks, you know, you're going to take it personal. As far as my second the skill set goes, you know, it's obviously, you know, doing artwork and stuff like that. More specifically, 
Let me show you guys something. This is something I've been working on. I don't have it down yet, but I want to show you guys something on what I'm working on. It's something I've been working on for a while now. I've been trying to develop this idea for a comic. And the other day, like, I wanted to bring back, like, that old school comic style from the graffiti realm. So I came up with these guys. And this is just a name idea that I'm about to throw out there to you guys. Like, it's not the actual name of it, but it's just an idea for now. I don't know how I'm going to work these guys or do them as a comic. It's going to be super hard because they're so big. And you see this paper, it's like super tiny. But here is the actual, let me pull this for y'all. But here is the actual name called Oni and Jack and if you guys are wondering who's who Oni because this one is represented like he's supposed to be a Japanese Oni demon that fucks with poor little Jack here so like I am working on that um, it's, like I said it's just an idea um, other than, you know, doing music, you know, obviously artwork is my second skill set. Been drawing for as long as I can remember. Like, literally, I grew up drawing. Like, believe it or not, back in high school, I had this one science class that I could not stand. Thankfully, I actually had a very cool-ass science teacher, because my science teacher was like, all right. Like, I noticed that, you know, you're not interested in the science. That's okay. You know, not everybody is. So, what he did is he graded me. Like, he had me do sketches for him and stuff every day. And every day, that would be my grade. And at the end of the year, he would give me, like, he gave me this massive project, which he then graded me on for. Like, he gave me this massive freaking you know, art design piece to put together and then I turned that in at the end of the year and that would count as, you know, my science grade. So pretty much all in all you can say I passed science through artwork. So it was a pretty cool deal. So if my science teacher is watching this by random I didn't say that about the science class. If you are watching, sir. Hopefully he's not. I don't think he is, but you you never know. You never know with people. I mean, he could be watching. He could be watching. You never know. Oh, shit. That sucks. But, like, you know, as far as, like, that goes, you know, that's that. But as far as, you know, relationship side of things, I don't get why people feel like they need to fucking do what they do to me. It's so like, I sit there, I treat them like a good guy. I'm an army brat. I was raised around the military lifestyle. I know how to treat people. And, like, you know, I did nothing but, you know, work out for him. You know, I did what I felt, you know, how a person should be treated. Like, you know, like, every girl I get with, you know, I do treat them right. Like, I really do. I do everything I can to show them that, hey, you know. I do love you, I do care about you, and I try to make things work the best that I can. 
And in the end, it just it never seems to work out. And why that is, I don't know. It even has my own mom wondering why people treat me the way they do. Like, do I really look that bad? Do you guys feel you have to fucking treat me like this? When I'm over here giving you the entire fucking world in the palm of your hands. And see, you're lucky, sis. You're lucky. And honestly, Angel, and like, and I told a lot of people this, but Angel, I do mean it with you. I really do wish I had someone like you in my life because, you know, there needs to be more people like that out there that do actually care. Like, you might not think I don't see your comments, but I do, and I appreciate every single one of them. I really do. Like, there's just so much going on in this world that, like, my thing is, why can't we just stop all the judgment and just come together and get along? Like, I don't get it. Like, I just don't get why people feel they have the right to fucking judge. Especially when you're someone in my shoes who, I might not look at, but you know I am special needs. Yes, I have a few problems. Yes, I was born one pound, 15 ounces. Yes, I'm only five foot three because of it. Was I supposed to live when I was born? No, I was supposed to die the day I was born. But what happened? My ass is right here, right now, talking to you guys. And most people don't take that into account. The fact that I'm not supposed to even fucking be here is a miracle in itself. Yes, I have problems because of my past. Because the one thing most people don't realize is that when y'all go to bed, y'all go to sleep, y'all go to dreamland. But every night when I go to sleep, I go to war with my past. And it's never easy. Hell, to be honest with you, at times it's downright the most impossible thing for me to do, but I still fight it anyways. Like, it straight out fucking sucks. I can't help the way that I am. And most people just don't seem to get that. Because, you know, the one question I do get asked all the time is like, why aren't you with anybody and why aren't you signed to a record label? Well, I'm not with anybody, obviously, because I keep getting treated like shit. And as for being with the record label, it's because, obviously, you know, they have no respect for how I look. Like, they don't care about what I can or can't do. They don't care that I don't have any money. All they care about is, you know, paying your way in and, like... You know, how you look when honestly, what happened to the days of doing music to help a freaking artist develop? What happened to the labels that help these artists out? What happened to the labels that would bring people on regardless of how you look? I mean, not to completely get off subject here. But like some of the weirdest looking people on earth are some of the most famous. Like for a prime example, Stephen Hawking, one of the most brilliant minds on the face of this earth. And look at him. The dude's in a wheelchair and can't even speak and yet he's one of the most brilliant minds on this earth. Like the man is a genius, literally.
And then you have, um, God, I can't think of his name right off the bat, but he was on Ridiculousness, and he was even did um, Fantasy Factory and did a few movies together. Um, I'm trying to think of his name, like, he's a little fat, chubby dude, but, like, he's a special needs kid, and look at him. The dude's making big bucks. So, these guys that, you know, look weird can make it. Why can't I? You know? I just don't get it. I really fucking don't get it. It's like, you know, no matter how hard I try, it just isn't there. Granted, yeah, I have a couple of really awesome collaborations that I'm working on with some great artists. Which, on a side note, if you guys know anywhere to get some free headphones, let me know because mine quit a long time ago and I kind of, you know, need some new headphones to record properly. But, you know, I don't have any money. And that's one thing a lot of record labels and even record companies in general don't get. I don't have any money. That's why I'm trying my hardest to sell you know, my beats, my artwork, anything I can, but nobody buys because everybody wants free shit. Well, I'm sorry, I don't do free shit. I quit that a long time ago. And it's because I'm getting tired of getting fucked over is why I started making people say why I said it. As a matter of fact, I mentioned it in, I think it was, yeah, it was yesterday. In my last live stream. Where I had mentioned. You know do you want 10 tracks for 10 bucks. Through PayPal. Here you go. You know you want an album cover. Along with those beats. 20 bucks. Here you go. You want a beat. Like beats with hooks. Here you go. 15 bucks. And that's cheap. That is some of the cheapest you will ever find. I've checked the market out, and, you know, that's what my stuff is worth to me, is 10 bucks, because I put in the time, I put in the effort. Yeah, they might be simple beats, but one thing I found out is that some of the most simple tracks can be the most challenging. And prime example. While we're on that subject, prime example, Pong. Old school game, right? Should be the simplest game in the world to, you know, go back and forth. But once you get that little cube going across that screen, it can be super, super hard to stop it. Like, it really can. Like, it can be super hard to stop this shit. And, you know, and that's the way it is in the gaming industry. Some of the most simplest games in the world can be the hardest. Same thing with, you know, rap beats and instrumentals. Some of the most simplest beats in the world can prove to be the most challenging. And that's what I want to do. I want to challenge artists. I want to push them. I want to make them think outside the box in ways that they've never thought before. I want to, you know, take that style and make them switch it up and make them think lyrically. I want to challenge them both lyrically and mentally to challenge them to becoming a better artist. That's why I do simple beats. I don't do all this high-end, fancy, you know, intricate bullshit. Like... And that's one thing I've learned over the years is that some of the most simplest beats in the world can be some of the most challenging out there. Alrighty, I definitely will, sis.
And I know you guys love me, and hey, thanks for that. This I've actually had for a while. And if you guys can't see, it says warning along the side. And yes, if you guys have not noticed by now, um, I actually had this club since actually 2012, which is right around the time I went to jail. Yes, I went to jail. Long story, I'll explain it to y'all some other time. But, you know, rocking the Michael Jackson look. God rest his soul to the king of pop. I grew up on that man. Amazing music, amazing guy in general. You know, so. You know, God rest his soul. You know, I gotta represent. Plus, the look just seems to work for me. I don't know why, it just seems to work. But, uh, you know, that is a major problem with me in anything I do is that nobody takes me seriously. And it's because of these people always fucking me over and over and over and over and me not seeing it. They act like, oh, you're supposed to know how to look out for that. Like, Motherfucker, how am I supposed to know if somebody's gonna fuck me over or not until they do it? Like, that makes no fucking sense to me at all. That's like putting a fucking puppy, a brand new puppy in a living room and expecting it not to tear up the couch. Very rarely is it not gonna tear up the couch, but more than likely it's gonna destroy and completely obliterate that couch. So, like, you know, it makes no sense to me. And I am sorry that I have to be so negative about this shit, guys. It's, just, it's really getting old really fucking quick, and it needs to end. Like, you know, it's, it's total bullshit the way... Everything is working nowadays. And see, as far as artwork goes, my problem is that nobody is willing to buy my artwork because I price it at that price that it is worth. Like, you guys have seen my artwork. You guys have seen what I can do. I can do pretty much any given... Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Hurry up. One minute, guys. We'll be right back. Wow, what's going on? Yeah. All right. All right. So the guys had to check and see if the dog was upstairs. Didn't know if we let him back in or not. But you know, and that's my problem with my artwork. Like I was saying, is that you know nobody, you know, takes me serious enough. To, you know, want to buy the artwork that I put out there. And that's a huge problem for me. Like, those are two of my biggest skills are music and artwork. Mostly artwork. So it's like, you know, I could put out all the artwork in the world. And nobody would buy it. And it's because I keep getting screwed over and nobody takes me seriously because of that. Like, they act like it's my fault that I get screwed over. And I want to... Well, that being said, guys, I'll catch you later.